All right, this is part two of our lesson uh, reviewing graphing rational functions. All right, in part two, we're going to look at these five functions and um, figure out just by looking at the equations what are the holes, vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, slant asymptotes, the domain, and the x and y intercept. Okay. Under what circumstances do we have holes in the function? Can anybody tell me that? When do we have holes? When? The key is about, say it louder, Demetria, canceling out. Okay? If there's a factor that cancels out, that's when you're going to have a hole in the graph at that number. Is anything going to cancel out on this problem? No, nothing's canceling out, so there won't be any holes. So we'll just say none. We'll just say, <laughs> yeah, none. Okay. Um, vertical asymptotes, where do they come in? The denominator equal to zero. Like after you cancel out anything that can cancel out, all right, then, you do, then we do this. So um, what will be the vertical asymptote then? X equals two. Okay, we're getting that by setting the denominator here equal to zero and solving. So. Um, one more time, please don't just put 2. It has to be x equals 2. If, if on your test, if you go VA 2, you're losing a point for that. So please don't do that. OK, um, vertical asymptote. Now, how do horizontal asymptotes work? Right, you got your three cases. It's all about the degree. If the top degree is less, um, what is it? It's y equals 0 if the top degree is less. If the degrees are the same, co leading coefficients, a fraction out of the leading coefficients. And what if the top degree is higher? Well, maybe. But there's, if the top degree is higher, there's no horizontal asymptote. When do we have a slant asymptote, specifically? When it's exactly one higher. Exactly one higher. Uh, but in this case, the degrees. How do the degrees compare? They're the, same. They're, the same. They're the same. The degrees are the same. So we're, we're in that situation where we're going to look at the leading coefficients, which are 3 and 1. OK, so we're thinking um, y equals 3 over 1, which of course is just y equals 3. So that'll be our horizontal asymptote. All right? We will never have a horizontal asymptote and a slant asymptote. So I'm going to go ahead and just say none right now. All right, let's see if we can do the domain strictly based on the uh, vertical asymptote. OK, because whatever else is going on, we know we got this vertical asymptote. Um, can you give me the domain just based on the vertical asymptote being at 2? I'm going to move this over to domain, but I put it here right under the 2 because so, you can see I'm basing it on the 2. Okay? Without even having the graph, we know it's going to go uh, from negative infinity up to the vertical asymptote, and then from vertical asymptote to positive infinity. Okay? That, I'm going to cut and paste this over to the domain now. All right, this brings us to the y-intercept. How do I find the y-intercept? Yeah, you, we're going to plug in 0 for x, OK? So just to remind myself, let x equal 0. If you want to put a little note to yourself, you can write that down if you didn't already know it. Y-intercept, let x equal 0, OK? So if I look back at this equation, if I let x equal 0, that means I have a 0 right here, and I have a 0 right there. But if this is 0, that means this whole little term is 0, OK? So really quickly, it boils down to just being this, 5 over uh, negative 2, or just negative 5 over 2. Uh, and, and please don't give me a decimal. Leave it as a fraction. So, um, so negative 5 over 2, hold that in your brain. Now, because this is the y-intercept, OK, then I'm going to put that value as the y-value. So I will put negative 5 over 2 as the y value for the y-intercept. And of course, the x value is what? Zero. Zero. So please write your y-intercept and your x-intercept. Don't just put negative 5 over 2. 
uh, put 0 comma negative 5 over 2. It's a point. All right, how do I find the x-intercept? The top. The bottom equal to 0 is how we find the vertical asymptotes. If we set the numerator equal to 0, uh, we'll find the uh, x-intercept most of the time. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to set this numerator equal to 0 to find my x-intercepts. <coughs> All right, so if I set 3x plus 5 equal to 0, subtracting 5 gives me 3x equals negative 5. Divide by 3, so I have x equals negative 5 over 3. Hold that in your head, negative 5 over 3. Now this is the x-intercept, so I will put it for the x value, and uh, the y value will be 0. All right, any questions on number 2? All right. Um, looking at number 3, all this ugliness happening. Um, this is sort of out of order, so it's really bothering me. It's like my OCD is happening. Let's see, x squared minus 5x plus 4. All right, I'm just going to flip it around properly. That makes me feel a lot better. Okay. Um, now, I actually like to do the horizontal asymptote slash slant asymptote first. Um, so let's do that first, okay? Because once we start factoring and canceling, things get messy. Um, so is there a horizontal asymptote on this problem? Yes, yes. yes. okay, uh, because look at the degrees. Once again, the degrees are equal, okay? Degree 2, degree 2. So once again, we'll be doing leading coefficients, okay? Which are 4 over 1. Okay, so we have a horizontal asymptote of y equals 4. All right, so that's my horizontal asymptote. Okay, um, now I can go back and talk about the holes and the vertical asymptote. I, I always like to do the vertical asymptote first. Oh, and I mean the horizontal asymptote first. So since I have a horizontal asymptote, what about slant asymptote? Automatically none. You can't have both. can't have both. <coughs> All right, now, um, for holes, how do I figure out if there are any holes or not? i got to factor and see if anything cancels or not. Okay, so that's what I'm going to do. Let me change color so I can keep track. So this is going <coughs> to, the numerator is going to factor down as 4 times, you know what, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do this on the black screen. <laughs> Just makes it hard to teach. All right, um, I needed more space, so I just recopy this problem over to the black screen here. Um, we are trying to figure out if there are any holes or not. So um, first of all, I already rewrote this problem. So I have 4x squared minus 4. The denominator in standard form would be x squared minus 5x plus 4. So let's go from, from here. Uh, the numerator is going to factor as 4 times x squared minus 1. All right, GCF is what just happened there. Um, now, the denominator, let's go ahead and factor the denominator down as, as much as possible. x squared is only going to factor as x times x. So we know this. Um, 4. 4 has two possibilities. Right? I hear minus 4 or minus 1. It could have maybe been 2 times 2, but I hear you saying that 1 times 4 is what's really going to happen here. Okay? So I hear you saying, all right, so for you, 4 and 1. Remember, inner plus outer m equals middle. So inner, I have 4x. Outer, I have 1x. If I want to get a negative 5 middle, um, like you said, it has to be negative and negative. Okay, so negative 4 and negative 1. And we have to make sure we're getting the positive 4 out of it. And we do, because negative 4 times negative 1 is a positive 4. Okay, so we factored that out correctly. Well, I don't see anything that cancels, so I guess there's no holes. 
All right, I'm hearing, uh, wait a minute, Mr. Burton, skirt, are you messing up again or are you just kidding? It's hard for us to tell you mess up so much, Mr. Burton. The x squared can still factor, correct, okay? Um, this is the difference of two squares up here. So we want to go ahead and factor this further, okay? So this x squared minus 1 is going to factor as... All right, x plus 1, x minus 1, okay? So let me just go ahead and erase. Okay, so that's going to factor as x plus 1, x minus 1. All right, now what do I see? The x minus 1's cancel out. Yeah, the x minus 1's cancel out, all right? That's why um, if I take x minus 1, and set it equal to 0 and solve, all right? Adding 1 to both sides, I get x equals 1. But instead of a vertical asymptote, what's happening here? There's going to be a hole at 1 comma something, all right? I need the y value that goes with it, though. How do I get the y value that goes with it? Correct. The part of the equation that didn't cancel, we'll put that into our TI-30 XS multi-view. And we'll find the Y value that goes with it. Okay. You know, because I want the world to have this calculator. What calculator, you say? This calculator. You think I got paid by Texas Instruments, but <laughs> this calculator has helped so many of my beloved students, like, pass this class and pass their end of course test that I just want to spread the to the world. Hold on, Bryce is going to yell at me. Hold on. Parentheses, you didn't have to put the bottom in parentheses, but it doesn't hurt. Okay, so we type this into the calculator, the part that did not cancel out, um, and we'll check this out. We wanted to know what was happening at, wait, I pulled up the wrong thing. We wanted to know what's happening at 1. So we might, as we might as well start at 1. Um, let's see. I'm in ask mode. Hold on. I don't want to be in ask mode. Okay, so at 1, we have negative 8 thirds. Okay, so negative 8 thirds. Don't give me a decimal. Just leave it as a fraction. So we have a hole at 1 comma negative 8 thirds. Okay, is that this first column? All right. So we'll have this hole at 1 comma negative 8 thirds. Now, the vertical asymptote. Okay. Um, if we look at the part of the denominator that did not cancel out. That will give us the vertical asymptote. So if I set this guy equal to zero, okay, adding four to both sides, x equals four, all right, this gives us our VA, okay, x equals four. Okay. Um, now that we have our vertical asymptote, we are equipped to talk about the domain. So this is going to be the domain right here because we can't see the heading anymore. Um, but we have to be careful. Let's not just, we can't just immediately know what the uh, domain is going to be just from the vertical asymptote because this time there's a hole in the graph and that's going to further break up the number line. In fact, let's think of it as a number line for a second. That will help us understand the domain, okay? So keep in mind, we have two breaks in the, in the graph. Basically, it's almost like um, you could almost treat the hole like another asymptote as far as the domain goes. So we have a break in the graph at yeah, one. Okay. So consider the number line of possible domain, okay? Right now I'm showing negative infinity to positive infinity, the entire number line. Um, because we have a hole at one, okay, then that's an illegal value. 
So let's see, right here at 1, that's an illegal value. We've got to leave that out. And then because of we have an asymptote at 4, that's another illegal value. So at 4, we have to leave that out as well. All right, so as far as the domain, the domain is going to be all of the other x values. So when you do your domain, your domain is going to be in three pieces. So from this portion over here, we're going to say the domain will be negative infinity to 1. And then for this portion in the middle, that's going to be from 1 to 4. And this portion on the end is going to be from 4 to infinity. So if you just think of it as a number line with uh, two missing values, okay? Um, one missing value because of the hole and another missing value because of the asymptote. Then if you think of it as a number line, you can't go wrong, all right? So this will be our domain. And I'm just going to copy this to the other uh, picture. Okay, so there's the domain that I just copied from the other screen. Um, so now we need to find the, the y-intercept and the x-intercept. So remember, if I want to find the y-intercept, I let x equal 0. So that's what I'm going to do right now. And you might want to write that down if you need it. You know, the little notes there. To find the y-intercept, you let x equal 0. So uh, for number 3, if I let x equal 0, then that's going to look, look like this. Um, if x is 0, then that means I have a 0 right here, and I have zeros here and here. All right, But if I let those x's equal 0, then that's going to wipe out this entire term. This entire term is zeroed out. And this term, and this whole term is gone. Okay, so very quickly, I'm just left with this. All right, I'm left with negative 4 over 4. Only the constants are going to be left if you, once you let x be 0. You're just going to have the constants. So negative 4 over 4, which of course is um, negative 1. Okay, so this is how you find your y-intercept. And because it is the y-intercept, I'm going to let that be the y-value. So of course the, y, the x-value is what? 0. zero. So write it that way. Don't just put negative 1, put 0 comma negative 1. Okay? What now, this is number 3, uh, y-intercept. Now, if I want to find the x-intercept, that's where um, most of the time I'm, I can get away with setting the numerator equal to 0. Now, be careful. Um, don't just set the numerator equal to 0 the way it is. Remember, we had factored factored this thing down. <laughs> Don't laugh at me. I can't always talk right. Um, these x minus 1's wound up canceling out. So the numerator is really just this 4 times x plus 1. That's all it is. Okay, so let's set that equal to 0. Yes. Yeah, will you close the door for me, please? So, oh, that hurts. All right, so if I set this equal to 0, um, I could think of it as dividing both sides by 4. So really, I just have x plus 1 equals 0, subtract 1 from both sides. So I'm going to get x equals negative 1. OK, so this is going to give me an x-intercept, negative 1. Um, because it is an x-intercept, I'm going to put it as an x value. So it's negative 1 comma 0 will be my x-intercept. All right, any questions on how I found my y-intercept and my x-intercept? OK. Um, all right, well, this video is actually long enough. So I'm going to stop this video here, and I'll start a new video for number 4 and 5.